Welcome back, everyone, to another exhibition match. And we're into one that was actually played in one of the Palladium events, so high-level players all playing together. 3v3 on Mecha and Sonya. Isride, Indire, and Masper all up against Gorda and... Oh, Intel, I haven't seen them in a long time. And Flumby. Spiders, Air, Amph versus Spiders, Air, Cloaky. You're already looking forward to being very aggressive. Which kind of makes sense, being as they're playing the... Actually, a spider could also be pretty aggressive here. At any rate. Pretty even start on both sides. Oh, Northside going immediately for bombers. Indolid very quickly getting some ravens up. Or at least a raven. That's an interesting start. Normally you would see air player start with swift, although is a right starting with nothing at all. Apparently just letting their teammates take the metal as needed. Northside on the other hand, yeah, they're just getting ready, I guess, to go for some mechs hunting. And you can't see any other reason why you'd have just one bomber. Same time, though, is right as the one swift. The single Swift, which actually is pretty good to have right now. Does spot the mate, does spot the Raven. So they're absolutely aware that there is a Raven ready. It's just the one, but of course they don't really know that. For all they know, there could be multiple Ravens and they just spotted one. So that Swift was invaluable. Regardless, Northside still not managing to push a whole lot, do a whole lot of damage yet. There's small roving bands of fleas and not much they're finding. And that's the thing with Mechan and Sonya. In a 1v1 context, it's often turned into just flea battles, into venom battles. But I'm not quite sure how it works with the venom nerf about a month ago. I haven't really seen a lot of people play it. No one really liked this map in 1v1, but in 3v3, you got two other players that are providing additional support besides just the one player that might also be going for spiders. Ooh, and that's where the raven comes in. Oh, that's really where the raven comes in. It brings the swifts in as well, though unfortunately for for Indolid, his ride has far more swifts and far better position swifts. So those weavers are going to last. Pretty darn close, though. 30 health left in that thing. But hey, it survived, so that's what counts. It survived, it can build stuff, it can rebuild if necessary. Which is really useful because the south side has been falling behind economically. North side being quite a bit more aggressive when it comes to actually taking the frontline expansions. And also quite a bit more on point when it comes to taking the backline expansions. Like, Golda has been consistently just building up their little backline section here. While we're just now seeing Masper do the same there. In the south. Flumbia as well, far quicker at getting these side expansions on the Isthmus. Which we're just seeing India Ray take right now. So yeah, all these considered, it's definitely been a much quicker scenario for, for the north side than the south side. And that's been keeping them ahead quite a bit economically. Also, they don't have a huge amount of options to actually deal with that. I mean, they they have a bunch of Swifts, but those don't do a lot of damage to ground units. And they have... They have nothing else. They have no bombers. The only Raven is in possession of Indolid. Or in the in the possession of Indolid. It does not own Indolid. Indolid owns it. Unless... Ownership somehow became reflexive since the last time I did commentary, in which case I guess it does go both ways. Oh, it looks like we're seeing Masper coming in trying to find something, but unfortunately they don't have a whole lot to work with. I mean, there's... The one Lotus isn't too bad, but Flumi's commander there is definitely a threat. These Venoms are looking like they want to fight. And looking like they found a fight, taking out that bulkhead. Or trying to, anyway. Not sure if Masper got the memo that Venoms did get a bit of a nerf. Ooh. 
Start we're coming in here, trying to take them out. Is ride losing a few swifts in the process. Gets a revenge kill of their own, but not quite enough. Ooh, same time though, India Ray coming in with the old Cloaked Reaver Ball. And not been spotted. Not been spotted. There it is. Takes out a bulkhead. Takes out a conch, possibly. Nice thunder coming in here again from Isaride. And that is a commander down. Flumi's commander goes down for being a little too aggressive. Nice job there. Takes out a couple conches as well. That is huge. There's still a conch, however, so the reclaim is still available to North Team. Flumby could still at least take back some of that, but that is still a huge blow. And another Thunderbird coming here, taking out all of the Ravens, opening them up for the Swifts. Isaride not letting those Ravens go for free this time. Well, that was quite the blow. Took it a forward commander. That should slow things down for attack. Although, to be fair, it took it a forward commander, but the base is still intact. So, it does lead things a little weaker, but there's time for Flumby to get a bunch of conches here and other units and basically redouble their fortifications on this expansion point. So, yeah, they lost the commander, but they didn't they didn't lose the thing the commander would be pivotal in rebuilding. So, I don't think it's a huge loss yet, but it's not nothing. If this does fall, then Flumby is who's is host. Like this this expansion needs to stay up for Flumi to actually have any kind of buffer to work with. And that's exactly what India Ray is trying to make happen. Get rid of that expansion completely. Heck, even if they just get rid of the conches, that's still... The fact that the commander is not there providing extra defense. That's still an important consequence. Slings are coming in here, and should be able to take care of most of this. Possibly take care of all of this. Venom's working to come in here and mostly just acting as a distraction, but that's fine. I mean, get rid of the lotuses. That opens up all of the metal extractors, and that's... That is huge. This is actually where losing the commander does become relevant. The fact that this area is under attack and the conscious are being distracted. Repairing things, possibly reclaiming things, don't really have a lot to work with. As far as actually shoring up defenses and getting this expansion secured. I mean, the bulkhead is not going to be enough for that, unfortunately. It's it's trying. I get the logic. Basically, it worked like a crab. It's just not enough. And with that, a couple metal extractors go down. This base is really having a bit of a tough time. Two bulkheads and a conch does not really make up for the lack of a commander. At the same time, this front line from Golda also taken out. Or sorry, a front line from Masper taken out by Golda. Kind of went back and forth. Still, this expansion is... Going to see the consequence of that commander having been killed. Same time, over to the north side of the map, we have... What looks like a reasonably strong enough force to get through here. I mean, the Swiss are going to be a pro... Oh! Okay, interesting use of gremlins to counter the Thunderbird coming in here. Fortunately, not quite enough to stop the Thunderbird from going home. Yes, it is! Nails the Thunderbird last second. That is going to be huge. There's no other Thunderbird in play. That means that there's going to have to be a rebuilt Thunderbird coming in here from... from Indolid, if they even remember to do that. Or think to do that, because at this point... You know, they were just relying on that one being there the whole time. So, that will make it easier to advance, but at the same time, Duck's coming over to the back line. Flumby being super sneaky with the Ducks. Only loses a couple of them as well. Takes out a few of India Ray's expansions, but still south side. They have managed to take that front line from Flumby, and Flumby's not quite managing to get the revenge that they need. It's a good thought, it's a good sentiment, but unfortunately for them, it's just not enough. And also, having lost the Thunderbird, it looks like no further Thunderbird has been rebuilt. So yeah, assaults along the back lines like this are going to be considerably more successful than the first time around. So well played by Indi or India Ray there. Okay, that being said, all this stuff about Flumby, it's kind of back up. 
Uh, the commander has kind of been compensated for. With all the bulkheads. But still, the metal extractors remain down. The repairs are taking up a lot of energy, and there hasn't been a lot of reclaim here either. Masper looking to push through here. India Ray's been just cutting through this entire time. What in the world? Oh, just take the bulkhead. Interesting call. I mean, try not to lose your Karen in the process, but yeah. I mean, that's that's the way you do it. So for lack of a Thunderbird, there's really no threat coming in here over the western si northwest side. India Ray can just push in. I mean, the Lotuses are a problem. That's... Okay, that actually is a pretty big problem. Yeah, that's too many Lotuses for these to deal with. Still, that does put North in, it's like in a really awkward position, contain-wise. What the? Oh. Oh, dear. Oh, that's not good. Okay, well, evidently, Masper accidentally hit the, the self-destruct button. Ah, wanted to delete one, accidentally double-clicked before deleting. Oof. Well, thankfully, that was just that was just wind generators. So that was like their entire base and everything. <laughs> Shouldn't be too hard to rebuild, but yeah, that sucks. I mean, uh, fortunately for South, they got plenty of energy. Like between the three of them, they're actually accessing on energy, so it's not the biggest loss, but it is kind of funny. Although, that being said, there is a rebuild over in the north of that central expansion. I guess I shouldn't say it's not nothing. I mean, that was actually overdrive there that was lost. And a decent amount of it, too. So yeah, once that gets rebuilt, the overdrive should be back in... Back somewhere in position. Still, the main overdrive is coming out of this geo plant. With the pylons, that's that's what's really doing it. Okay, are we going for a a reaver drop, or are you just throwing reavers in the back line to try to push through the back end? Because I could see a reaver drop. I mean, okay, I could sort of see a reaver drop. The swifts would put a stop to that pretty quickly, actually. Maybe don't. Same. Well, as it is though, North team. And they're getting some heavy, heavy firepower over the center, looking to break, looking across that river. Oh, what the? Oh, there was a reaver drop. I missed that. Got knocked into the lake, or into the sea, really. Thanks to all those swifts, is ride managing to dominate air control, but unfortunately lost all these reavers in the process. So I don't. I think you can pick up reavers from underwater like that. I think you'd have to terraform them up. Or lobster them. You could probably you could throw a lobster down there and just fling them out. But that's about it for that drop attempt. However, that drop attempt did expose all the swifts, which means that now there isn't much in the way of anti-air. And another drop could come in. However, the river has been taken by North Team, slowly but surely pushing into the bulkheads, only facing resistance from one crab, and not much else. Oh, good point. Actually, let's see. I think this was 1931. I think the Venom nerf was in 1931. I'd have to double check. I think it was pretty new in 1931. I don't think it was. I have to double check. It might have been 194. Because the current version is 1941, I think. But I don't. Uh, I don't know. I have to check the forms. But that's a good point, India. Anyway, pointing on chat that th this could have been old enough for Venoms to have not been nerfed yet. Ooh, not quite the right time position for the Imp. Good try. I mean, good. Good thinking. I, I like the idea. 
Unfortunately, it was a little bit too early on the drop. Still good lances coming in. The redbacks are somewhat disadvantaged by range. So it does leave the lance a bit of an opening to come in here and take them out. That's something. It's just hard to tell if it's enough. Same time, though, this eastern area where the commander was lost has been completely rebuilt. Crap, trying to do some damage to it, but it's not really enough. Actually, why isn't that crab doing damage to it? Oh, just out of range. Oof. Well, the bigger problem is, of course, all these forces here over to the western side of the map. Man, losing that reaver drop was a pretty big deal. And it looks like you cannot pull reavers out of the ocean with the transport. Which kind of makes sense. The transport would have to go underwater and it can't do that. So, yeah, lobsters are bust. And no one on this on south team has gone for amphibots, so no lobsters. Oof. Well, that's that's got to hurt. That's got to sting. As it stands, actually, Gorda just completely wrecking face. Being torn apart. Thunderbird attempt coming in here, taken out by anglers. Nice, sneaky, flumby anglers. They're really taking advantage of the fact that they're playing amphibots. Just got stuff all over the map. Sneaky forces everywhere, and that completely breaks the southwest. Center of the map is still holding for now, but it's just so much North Army coming in here. I mean, already 6,000 metal ahead on attrition. On top of the fact that they're currently running at metal advantage. I think the window for South Team is rapidly closing. They had a great opportunity when they killed Flimby's commander, but after that, they didn't really quite manage to capitalize on that. I mean... Trying to go over some transport stuff. Not really sure to deal with bulkheads, apparently, and ultimately didn't have a whole lot of other approach options. They, I mean, the attempt to the north did open things up, taking out the Thunderbird, but unfortunately didn't... After the Thunderbird was killed, there wasn't a, a follow-up attack because of no Thunderbird to actually take out the rest of the back line. And had that happened, I think this they would have completely shifted the game's momentum. However, they didn't do that, so that means the north team is just able to push in here. Taking heavy losses, however. So it's coming in from Mizride, coming in for ground defense, because why not? Top of the Venom Redback duo looking to... or Sorry, Venom Recluse duo. Looking to clean up everything that's been sent forward, and this could actually be the counterattack to come in. Attrition is evened up. Additional 3,000 going in favor of South Team. They're getting caught up by 3,000 at least. And Golda's commander locked down by Venom's. No support forces coming in here. I mean, thought him by Venom and Widow. Got Widowed, but nothing really to follow up. Venom's just do not deal enough damage to do that. Not when support forces are coming in hot. But the Swift Cuz does come in, finishes off Golda's commander. As two commanders to the north side have lost. To the south side have lost quite a lot of forces, quite a lot of territory way behind an economy, and are still hurting attrition-wise. They're catching up, but still, it's not great. Like, it's only 2,000 metal deficit, but then there's economic, there's the economic advantage difference, there's just the fact that there's most of the army that's actually there. The army value difference is got to be quite huge by now. If you look... Ah, I hate it, just this. Army value is actually only 2,000 apart. In fact, South is ahead of North at this point. North was slightly ahead of South, but not by much either then, so we are in a much more even game than it looked. And now the South side, having retaken, or at least broken the hold of the Metal Extractors, has a massive reclaim field to work with and has taken full advantage of it. Still, North side retains the economic advantage and will soon be ripping apart basically everything built over the Southeast side of the map. I mean, it's what, two dozen? Three dozen ducks? Pretty much three dozen ducks. Massive duck force coming on the eastern side of the map, and not a whole lot is prepared to defend it. This will be a good time for Thunderbirds. I mean, granted, the anglers are 
causing problems there, but still, Thunderbirds would at least cut the forces in half before they got themselves shot down. Beyond that, though, not a whole lot really prepared to deal with this. Bull is coming up. Unfortunately, they cannot shoot underwater. Ducks can shoot to the surface. I mean, I'm not really sure... The hovercraft does have daggers to deal with this, and should claymores deal with this if they're underwater really well. On land, though, I can see the use of the bolus, but not underwater. Do not go bolus underwater. Oh, and a gin too. Oh, that is that is clever. No lobster though, not lobstering in the gin. But the gin is still there. It has still prepped, prepped all the forces needed, so those bullets simply cannot approach the south side. And with that, all they need is a lobster. I mean, they could teleport in a lobster. Oh, never mind. The Moho Geoplank goes off in the center, or Advanced Geo goes off in the center of the base, taking out a massive chunk of everything. I think they've taken out a commander or two, too. Still... Wiping out a huge chunk of the base there, and... Wait, how did the forces get up there? Well, it doesn't really matter. They are now going down. Wait, can Jin shoot up like that? Didn't think Jin could shoot up like that. Shoot, I missed that. I mean, I know I can teleport in, but it doesn't... Oh, there is a lobster. I just missed it. That's That makes sense. Among all these corpses somewhere is a lobster. And it may not be enough, though. I mean, that was a big blow, losing all those ducks. Uh, granted, losing the, the advanced geothermal plant was also a big blow. But the south side just not letting go. You know, they are 9k metal behind in terms of attrition. And army value is probably... Yeah, yeah, now it's 5... 5,000 metal ahead from the north side. Still, the Venoms are managing to hold the line reasonably well. Reavers coming in as support forces taking out all of these Hermits. Bulkheads over the back of the boys providing supporting fire, and the Hermits should still be able to push through. And still taking out Masper's base. Dealing heavy damage. Flees. Something to find the opportune position... Oh, and a Scorpion coming in, too, because why not? Angelite coming in with a Strider Hub. And the Trinity, just in case. Why not throw in some Shiny? Well, okay, granted, it's going to probably not come off, because that's three minutes before that gets done. Another three minutes before the nuke goes off. And actually, Maybe. Maybe. It's just south side has a lot working against them right now, but they are managing to push back. They actually managed to hold back all of those hermits and continue to hold back everything here. Nice imp usage. Very nicely placed imp. Another imp comes in here, continues to lock this whole thing down, and that's yet another assault force from Flumby that's completely rendered ineffective. So there's not a whole lot that can be done there. I mean, four seconds left, but there's the Reavers come to finish the job. So Flumi just losing force after force, and Ducks coming in, or Archers rather, coming in here. His right swapping into Amphbot and saving the day, getting rid of that Jin. Completely lost. Okay, that's that's it. There's no more drop. They tried. They did a good job of it too, or at least they did a threatening job of it. But unfortunately, not really enough to you know solve the problem at hand. So yeah, north side actually could have time to use this nuke. Again, it won't be ready until about the 25 minute mark, but they're also not looking like they're finding a lot of ways in. So yeah, I can see the use of the Trinity. Fanstio being rebuilt. Fortunately, a lot of the caretakers were lost in the process, but still, it's building up, if nothing else. 
However, the center of the map remains under the north side's control. The river is theirs. South side managing to hold onto their plateau, but really can't push beyond that. But at the same time, the north side just can't break in, hence the nukes. I mean, Flea's dealing some damage here and there, grinding away the south side's economy. Really not sure what the south side could do right now. I mean, they're behind economically. I don't I don't agree with the use of the juggernaut. I'm, actually, no, actually, maybe I do. No, I can see the juggernaut. Yeah, as a way of throwing the bulkheads out of position, stopping them from firing. That has been a huge thorn in south team side. Especially that does make sense. And also the crab. Gets rid of that too. So I could see the use of the juggernaut, but I also am not surprised the juggernaut is not the main focus. Incidentally, how many commanders are left? His rights commander... Oh, I think Masper's commander... Yeah, I think Masper and India Ray both lost their commanders in the advanced geo explosion. And the nuke silo is done! So three minutes remain for the nuke itself to be ready. That's just how long it takes. So 26 minutes exactly will be when the nuke can fire. That is a pretty large investment of resources, but at the same time, the north side has been so far ahead. The south side has basically lost all their metal extractors, consistently forced to rebuild them, and consistently losing them. The reclaim's not a whole lot either. I mean, yes, it's there, but it's mostly energy. So not a whole lot is gained from that. So not a whole lot they can use to basically make up for the situation. And the scorpion as well going around the back lines does get spotted early. So might be countered, but this is looking really tough. I'm not confident that the, that south side has much option here. They're certainly trying. I can commend the fact that they've been able to hold on despite all the pressure. It's just the economic gap has gone wide enough that it's not really going to easily be cleared. There's a trinity on the way. Like There's a two-minute clock for the south side to actually make a play that gets them essentially into north side's base. And considering how far behind they are economically and just that they're also pushing a lot of resources into a couple of large units like Lance or Juggernaut, not both. I mean, more light units is really what's needed right now. Just this, what can be built to actually push back from the pressure. And one of Juggernaut or Lance. I think actually Juggernaut would be better, again, because of the bulkheads. Just as a way of taking out the units that have to stop to fire. And the crabs, which benefit from stopping to fire. Boys coming in here should be able to take out basically everything. Puppies looking to get a nice shot in here. Do manage to take out a couple boys. But the flea is here for distraction. Oh, still the boys do go down. It's not enough of a distraction to stop them. More fleas coming in. North side continue to apply pressure, and the clock is down to one minute. Actually, 47 seconds. Fleas come in here. Are just managing to wreck everything. Take out a caretaker. Might be able to take out the plate. I mean, it's certainly significant damage. South side, however, still managing to hold on. Gets the lance up, gets a couple of the hermits down. Or gets another lance up. Juggalot also has gone up, so it's something to hold the line. But the timer is down to... A minute? Wait, what happened to the production? Oh, I guess they must have run out of metal. Alright, well, clock got reset a little bit. Provide a little bit of extra time, like an extra 30 seconds to try to push out of here, and that's really not enough, is it? Oh. Oh, but the archer has spotted it. I think. Yes, it has. Absolutely has. The nuke is... The nuke is known, but there's a 10-second clock. There's no time to build an anti-nuke. I think they just realized that is it. There's going to be a nuke fired. And that will be game. I mean, okay, maybe it won't be a game, but yeah, like, hit 
you hit it right here-ish, it's, it's over. Because it's possible they might just go, oh crap, we just need to rapidly build an anti-nuke. They don't really have the resources to do that. But it's, that's it. Uh, Anti-nukes go, no, 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 don't resign. No, they resigned too soon. Ah. You, you prevented it from being blown up. Okay, so it's still at least a simulating pass. So I know we're, okay, it was going to hit the main base area. You stopped it from being blown up, you anti-monsters. Bless you, bless you all to heaven? Well, anyway, that was that. So, fortunately, I have a bit of a shorter stream today. I am going to be doing a stream for a Guilty Gear Plus R exhibition event tonight, so I will be mirroring that on the stream later in about seven hours. Sorry, about six hours. So, if you want more of my voice, that just tune into that later, but I don't really want to tire it out too much before that. I just wanted to, you know, work through the backlog a little bit, and these were apparently pretty good games, and that was a game that had a nuke in it. Not necessarily an interesting game, but it was interesting regardless. So it was actually a little back and forth. Good demonstration of why it's really important when you get an opening, like breaking a commander, to actually take full advantage of that. And, or when you take a Thunderbird, like, when you've opened things up, when you've taken out a key defensive tool that your opponent has, to then capitalize on that as best as you can. Because the south side, it seemed like the major mistake they made twice was getting a key break in their opponent's defenses and then playing it super safe around that and kind of backing off rather than pushing and applying pressure. But yeah, that was that. Because yeah, the entire game, they're pretty even in army value. Just the very end, it kind of fell apart. Anyway, so that was that. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everyone.